Welcome back to the channel, guys. We are three games into the Premier League season. It is the official worst time of the year. It's the international break, the Nations League, whatever else goes on around the world, whatever else the South American, African, Asian, and whoever else teams are doing. I don't know if they're playing friendlies. I don't take much notice because I don't really care. In other news, San Marino did record their first ever competitive victory but who cares let's review the Premier League after three matches who's doing good who's doing bad who's overachieving who's underachieving let's go let's take a quick look at the table here it is up on ponder screen by the way if you do like the channel there's plenty more content to come please support it by liking subscribing and sharing the videos clicking the notification bell to get more notifications as i do weekly videos weekly premier league predictions so without further ado let's get into it in first place or of course pep's man city tied with liverpool on nine points both of the 100 percent record liverpool have not conceded a goal yet further down in seven points we have brighton arsenal and newcastle Brentford and Villa have six points on five points. Still undefeated are Bournemouth and Forest. Four points with one win, one draw and one loss. We have Tottenham, Chelsea and Fulham. Three points with a win apiece and two losses. We have West Ham and United. Then we have on one point Leicester, Crystal Palace, Ipswich and Wolves. And the unfortunate SOBs with three defeats from three matches are Southampton and Everton. That is where we stand right now. So let's review team by team how they have started the season. I'm going to go through this bitch alphabetically just to make it a little bit more easier. So let's start off with the Gooners. Right, so... Arsenal kicked off the season with a 2-0 win over Wolves. Then they beat Villa 2-0. And then after Declan Rice got the most ridiculous red card I have ever seen in my life, the inconsistency in refereeing boggles the mind. Um, Arsenal have seven points from their three games. Um, a little bit underwhelming against Villa. Done well against Brighton. Done well against Wolves. Um, this is, I think, what we've expected to see from Arsenal thus far. Um... One of the things I think is Sterling was a very prude acquisition and I think he's going to show his worth as the season goes on. Next we have Villa beat West Ham 2-1 on the opening day of the season then of course lost to Arsenal 2-0 at home and then beat Leicester in the Midlands derby 2-1. Villa look every bit as good as they did last season. It will be interesting to see how they managed to cope with Champions League football this season. They've got a... It's not a bad Champions League draw, to be fair. So I think Villa will, will do a right in the Champions League. Um, they'll definitely get to the knockout stages, I would say. Um, so far, so good. Really, really impressed with Onana, who replaced uh, Diaz, who went... Oh, sorry, Diaz. Douglas Louise, who went to Juventus. Um, he slotted right into that team. The only thing I would say is Watkins looks to be misfiring so far. If he can get back into form and find the back of the net, which in no doubt he will do, I think Villa will be uh, will be good for this season. Really impressed with them so far. Bournemouth, one all draw against Forest, one all draw against Newcastle, and then they beat Everton 3-2 in that dramatic turnaround, 87 minutes in the game, and they were 2-0 down, and Everton looked like they were cruising to their first points of the season, but Bournemouth turned the script on his head. Um, unlucky not to beat Newcastle, to be honest. Um, the goal that was disallowed for the alleged handball, I think, was really harsh. They really played well against Newcastle, and I think Bournemouth look like they're going to carry on from where they left off last season. Will be interesting to see how Evan Nielsen uh, integrates into that team, but I've no doubt that Areola will produce something good again this season. Brighton, surprise package, I'd say. I know they've only played Palace, Liverpool and Southampton, and of course they lost the one hard team they've played in Liverpool, but... They looked really good against Palace and they looked really good against Southampton. If Thiago can come back 
and start firing once he clears up his injury. Uh, good things for Brentford. I did actually think they'll be down towards the bottom this season, but it looks like there's a lot worse teams in the league. Um, Brighton started off with their seven-year-old manager by beating Everton 3-0, absolutely battered them. They then beat United 2-1, a game which could have gone either way. And then they, of course, drew one all at Arsenal after being assisted by the referee. Brighton are very good. I think it's just so telling how any manager can come into Brighton and they all kind of have the same philosophy, same setup, play the same kind of football and are producing the same kind of results on the pitch. I've been really impressed. If you watch his interviews, he's really, really well spoken. He comes across really good and uh, big things, I predict, for their manager. Next, we have Chelsea. Uh, lost 2-0, of course, in the opening day of the season to City. Then they went on that absolutely chaotic run against Wolves 6-2. Um, absolutely madness off a match and then drew one all at Palace. A little bit disappointed with that result. They had many chances in that match. Um, Chelsea, yeah, look, look, look decent so far. I'm not too sure what to expect from Chelsea, to be honest. Um, they signed J- Jadon Sancho, which I I don't really see the, the the reason why they signed him. Nicholas Jackson with uh, Medawaki and Palmer. That looks like a nice little trio is perf- is is developing up front. Chelsea mm, been been okay so far this season. Eager to see how they perform in their next few matches. Next we have Crystal Palace. Surprisingly lost at the opening day of the season to Brentford. I didn't have that happening. Uh, then they lost at home to West Ham. Again, I didn't see that happening. And then they got a one or draw away at Chelsea again um, many saves by their keeper to keep Chelsea at bay Palace will be alright they made a couple of shrewd signings and the best thing they done was keep Mark Gahey from moving to Newcastle Everton I predicted a hard season for Everton but I didn't see them getting battered in their first three matches okay granted they did uh, look the better team against Bournemouth for large parts of that match and basically lost in the last six minutes. But the way that they lost to Brighton, the way that they lost to Spurs, um, very un-Sean Dyche-like. I know there's a lot of noise from the fans who aren't happy about the the style and the way of football that um, they're producing under Sean Dyche. Could we, could he be in um, in at risk of losing his job if the if the results don't start to pick up? I mean, I don't know, but it's just been a terrible start for Everton. They've been flirting with relegation constantly for the last few seasons. Is this going to be the season they finally cave in? Next, we have Fulham lost on the opening day to United, then beat Leicester, then got a one-all draw with Ipswich. Um, they had loads of chances against United. Um, and that could have easily been a draw. It could have gone either either way. Fulham looked good. Um, I really like the way that Marco Silva sets up his team. Emil Smith Rowe has looked fantastic since he has joined them, and obviously he's joined by former Gunners Nelson, um, who joined them on the last day of the season. I think Fulham are going to be good value, full value for money this season. I think they're going to do quite well. Next we have Ipswich um, lost at home to Liverpool. Lost. Sorry, lost away at Liverpool, lost at home to Man City, then got that one-all draw, their first point for over 20 years in the league. Well done, the Tractor boys. But um, yeah, obviously starting the season off against two of the best teams in the Premier League and the current champions was always going to be hard for Ipswich. The thing that worries me is if you see a couple of the goals that they conceded against Man City, if they think that they're going to be able to play that type of football in the Premier League, it's not going to be just Man City who punish them. So hopefully we see a mixture of that kind of football and going behind maybe a deeper block and maybe even just clearing their lines when they are getting pressed. Might see them stand a better chance of of, of escaping relegation. But, I mean, some of their football has been quite all right. Next we have Leicester, one all draw against Spurs, lost at home to, sorry, lost away at Fulham and then at home 2-1 to Villa. Um, in the first match against Spurs the match should have been out of sight by the end of the first half Spurs had so many chances Solanke had uh, three chances I think in that first half and then uh, Jamie Vardy 
necked a couple of red balls, came out and scored, and then told the Tottenham fans they've won fuck all as he got substituted in the 70th minute, I think, or something in and around that. Uh, Leicester look right, and obviously they have had the great news that they are not going to be docked any points. So, buoyed by that, can they escape relegation this season? I had them... Uh, in a relegation scrap this season. I still think that will be the case, but the fact that they're not getting docked any points is a real positive. Next, we have Liverpool. uh, Three wins, three clean sheets, seven goals scored, and in just that short amount of time, you can see exactly what Arna Slot is asking his team to do. They look really slick. They've kept so many aspects off the Klopp era that made them successful and it looks like they are attacking in a little bit more of a controlled manner. Um, they absolutely hammered United. Could have been 5-6 or whatever. Um, been really impressed. Been really, really impressed that Slot's been able to get in, um, work with this team for such a short amount of time and really imprint his uh, his philosophy and his ways on the team and he didn't think that he had to change too much from the Klopp era which is absolutely right and you can see a slight blend here Mo Salah looks at his absolute best again and let me tell you what a watcher of foreign football Spanish Italian football um, in Chiesa I think they've made a really good sign in it if he can stay fit I know he hasn't been at his best the last couple of seasons but if he can stay fit he is someone who can really be useful uh, when when Liverpool need him. Next, we have the champions, Man City. Man City just look like Man City, if I'm honest. But the scary thing is you give Haaland six weeks off and he comes back stronger, fitter, faster and with more motivation than ever. This is what you see. He's going to absolutely put the teams to the sword this season, I think. I think you're going to see... If he stays fit, um, his previous record uh, season overhauled this season, if I'm honest. Savinio looks like a good sign-in as well. And in Ilkay Gundogan, bringing him back, just that experience, just that feel-good factor. Um, Obviously, I had Man City challenging Arsenal for the title this season. I do still think Arsenal will pip City. But, um, yeah, it's been interesting to see how they've started the season um, in absolute full flow. And uh, Harden looks hungrier than ever. Next, we have United beat Fulham 1-0, lost to Brighton, then lost at home to Liverpool. It looks like more of the same from last season for Ten Hag. They've made some good signings in Delete. They've got, obviously, Ugarte in. Um, my biggest worry is just going forward. I, I know they were missing Hoyland. Uh, they started Xerxes against Liverpool. But again, I, just, I don't see it. In Rashford, they look like they've got a completely left side missing. Um, I would go with Garnacho over Rashford, if I'm honest. Diallo on the on the right looks looks good, but maybe not quite ready to, to make that step up and really have an influence on a complete Premier League season. Agate hopefully will bring some of that... Uh, solidity back to the Man United team but my god the way that uh, Liverpool just passed through them is quite worrying I feel sorry for Ten Hag because he's getting uh, smashed on the pitch and then he's coming into the press conferences and the the journalists just clearly have no respect for him because he talks a lot of shit so they press him and press him and press him and um, some of the questions that he's getting asked you would never see uh, journalists challenge Klopp or Guardiola like that because they would get shut down pretty quickly. Um, I'm just going to be interested to see how they start to play when Ugarte comes into the team. Next year, Forrest. <laughs> I had Forrest down for struggling all season, but I, I've been quite impressed, if I'm honest. Um, and then, obviously, they made a couple of signings on deadline day. They signed Ward Prowse from uh, West Ham and they signed Morato, not Morata from uh, from Benfica, I believe, young uh, young defender, and Forest looked really really good. Uh, Gibbs White is controlling stuff in the in in the midfield and attacking for them. Um, Chris Woods getting his uh, his 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 complimentary goals that he gets uh, that he gets every season. I, I've been quite impressed. Um, Forest might uh, surprise me more than I thought they would this season. So far, it's been a good start. Southampton. Um, yeah, it's just been exactly what I expected from Southampton. Three matches, three losses. Lost to Newcastle, lost to Forest, and lost to Brentford. Um, going forward, they don't look 
like they have too much to offer. And one thing I will say is that by signing uh, Aaron Ramsdale, that will shore up the defence somewhat. But yeah, I I just see them struggling for the rest of the season. I, th- I think this is going to be a very, very hard season for Southampton and their fans. Next, we have Spurs. One all opening day of the season against Leicester. Absolutely smashed Everton apart and then wasted a host of chances against Newcastle. They were really dominant against Newcastle. Um, I'm just... I want to see how they are when they get Solanke running that front line uh, for a few games because they have it all there. They just... What they looked like they lacked against Newcastle was a focal point up there. Someone to bring others into play. Someone to run behind the defence. Basically, someone like Solanke. So, yeah, it'll be really good to see what they, uh, what, what kind of results they pick up once Solanke comes, once Solanke comes back. Um, but, yeah, no, no worries about Spurs at all. Really uh, eager to see uh, Archie May play a few more minutes for them this season. So, yeah, Spurs promising couple of indifferent results to start off West Ham um, I thought were going to be the biggest overachievers this season but we have to give them a break they did play Villa on the opening day of the season then they played Palace then they played City three qu- quite hard matches to start the season off um, they looked really good against Palace um, le- less good against Villa and then were uh, battered by Man City but I think West Ham are going to be absolutely fine it would just be good to see what they can produce after lopetegui has got a few more weeks to work with his new signings and it's remember it's a new it's a completely new team um and then last but not least you have wolves lost at home to arsenal sorry lost away at arsenal lost at home to chelsea 6-2 and then drew one all with forest um the thing that worries me about wolves the most is they 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 they've let two really good players go in pedro neto and Max Kilman, who's obviously gone to West Ham and Chelsea. Um, yeah, Wolves might struggle this season, I think, because they, they, I don't think they've found replacements. I, I actually don't even know. Someone can correct me. I don't know if they've signed anyone. I can't remember if they signed anyone of any significance. But I think Wolves will, will definitely struggle this season. If you think they've lost over the past few seasons, with obviously Ruben Neves going, and then you've now got Neto going and Max Kilman. I think they are going to struggle somewhat this season um, and I really feel for Gary O'Neill because I really like him as a manager. Well, there you go, guys. A little review of the three weeks that have gone so far. The three matches in the Premier League. Um, everything is going to plan. City, Liverpool, Arsenal at the top. Man United shit and struggling. And then, as we predicted at the bottom, the three promoted teams would struggle. What do you think, guys? Um... As ever, if you are liking the content, please like, subscribe um, and hit the notification button as I continue to give my predictions and my reviews as the weeks pass by. Until next time, see you guys later.